Of all the repair ideas I have suggested, I think none has met more resistance than inserting leather in a steering wheel. I have been surprised at the negative response, actually. I think 99% of technicians just want to put glue on this and spray it with an aerosol can. But we are forward thinking on this channel, so let's go. Welcome back everyone. Our goal is to replace just this one section of the steering wheel. And since we're going to be cutting this section out, I want to put a little glue on the threads on the part that we're going to be saving. So if the threads wanted to unravel, well, we're going to anchor them down right here on the end. And then we can just slice this piece right out. Normally you would feel cutting into the rubber core a little bit. Uh, however, on this particular steering wheel, there is a channel and we're cutting down into the channel. We'll discuss more about that in just a minute. But just uh, follow around with a single edge razor blade seems to be about the best way. And then with the ends cut, we can just slice it lengthwise and peel it off. With the leather out of the way, you can see that there is a deep channel cut here where the leather is sewn together. And uh, if that channel wasn't there, we would pretty much just have to butt up the new piece to the old piece. But this way we have a channel that we can tuck our ends into, giving us a really nice finish. Now, as you know, when you sew two pieces of leather together, you have two flaps on the bottom side, that's called the selvage. And these channels allow that selvage to drop right down into that channel, right into that cutout. And then the leather is allowed now to lay perfectly flat on the surface. Without the cutout, the selvage might actually cause the leather to raise up a bit, even though it's been skived on the end. And when it raises up, there's a ridge that ridge receives a lot of abuse and that's where you're always touching up the color. So the length will be the rubber plus the width of both channels. So because I have my thumb on the end of the tape, I'm starting at two and I'm going to 23 and a half. So there's 21 and a half centimeters for length. Now measuring for the width of our piece, it looks like we're going from 2 to 13, so let's say 11, but 11 might be a little wide. Now the inside of the wheel will be a shorter distance, and so we're going here from 2 to 20, and that gives us 18 for the inside dimension. So this is a good opportunity to use up any scraps of leather you saved. You can always use the smallest piece on a steering wheel insert. First getting a straight edge. Now I'm going to measure out the 11 centimeters for the width. I know that uh, could be a little bit wide. Uh, however, we can always wrap this around, and do a test fit. And if we need to trim off half a centimeter later, we can do that, but at least we won't come up short, will we? And just to make sure my lines are parallel, measure twice. I have another measuring device that I use as a square, small enough to fit in my box, and it's perfect for a job like this. So I can just line up to that top line and get me an ending line. There we go. Here I'm telling somebody to leave me alone unless they want to be in my video, so they made a quick scat. Now we're going for that 21 and a half centimeters long. Remember, this length goes totally from the 
the far side of one of the channels to the far side of the other channel, leaving us enough flap there to tuck in. So now the inside of the wheel is a shorter 18 centimeters, but that 18 centimeters needs to be centered against the 21 and a half. So I put a center line and then I can put nine centimeters on the center line and mark 18 and the end of the tape. That's my 18 centered on the nine mark, which is the exact middle of the piece. Now normally you would trim this, meaning your leather would be longer in the middle than it would be on the sides. Uh, however, with the channels, I have found it better actually just to leave this mark there for now and to trim it later once I've got everything situated in place on the steering wheel and I think you'll see how that works out here in just a little bit. Now all the uh, stitch holes will have to be within that 18 centimeter mark that I made. I'll, I'll have to fall within that 18 centimeters. And uh, after this I test fit and I did trim that extra half of a centimeter off of the width. So we're going to have a nice snug fit. Now to prepare for the stitching, I'm marking out every half of a centimeter and this is where the holes are going to be punched. Why half a centimeter? It, it's really up to you, uh, but it's nice to pre-punch the holes as opposed to using a sharp uh, leather needle and get the holes sort of haphazardly uh, put in there. You can do it, uh, but this just makes it easier. It makes it way easier. Just a couple more minutes of prep time, but easier to stitch. Now this line is going to be the line that the punched holes actually fall directly on. And so the idea is just to fold it over and punch both sides at the same time. Easy peasy. Now in a shop setting, this would be done on the sewing machine. But bear in mind, we are translating everything that we're doing, especially for the mobile technician here, making it as easy as we can for the guy working mobile, and as simply as we can. Now I'm going to add this contact cement both to the steering wheel and to my new piece of leather. Especially here on the ends. These ends are going to be permanent and I want them to be permanent. It will help to avoid uh, the shrinking of the leather once it's exposed to the sun here on the top of the steering wheel. We don't have the advantage of having been stitched uh, you know, to the leather right next to it, so there's a possibility that it would shrink. I still want to be able to move this new piece of leather a little bit as I'm sewing it, but these ends will be permanent. And right there on the very top of the wheel, that will be permanent too. We just need some flexibility for the inside. So I mentioned before saving the trimming 
until we got a good fit. I can make a mark right along the outside edge of the channel and get a really nice neat cut to follow that contour exactly so we'll have the exact same amount to tuck in all the way around the wheel. Now to stitch I am going to use one piece of thread and a round tip needle on either end and I go underneath, I start from underneath on each side. And then I come across, that is straight across, down through that same hole that has thread already in it. And then the other side comes across, straight across and down and shares that hole with the thread that's in that hole previously. So this stitch goes straight across from one side to the other and that squares off the end that's going to help hold that end in place nice and square right at the edge of that channel thereafter i'm going to use a baseball stitch which means i'm going to travel under and up the next hole. And the same with the other needle. Coming across, under, and up the next hole on the opposite side. So for each successive hole of travel, the needles cross and make an X coming up. Now there are certainly many choices of stitches that you could use here. We are using a very basic stitch. And of course this vehicle had a lot of mileage on it. As you can tell a lot of wear on that uh, uh, steering. And so we're going to use also the simplest stitch, the fastest stitch for the mobile repair guy or gal. And of course, we're using a heavy duty, specific hand sewing thread. We're going to get a lot of pull on this thread. So it needs to be quite strong. Now what I'm doing here is I'm test fitting this again, and I'm sliding the leather back towards the beginning a little bit, uh, just uh, trying to make sure that the final fit is good. So as I stitch, it's not necessarily the full tightness either. Now, if you were really good at it, I suppose you could tighten each stitch as tight as it would go, uh, maybe and keep test fitting each one as you go. But as I do several stitches, I want to test fit. And what I mean by test fit is this. Uh, say the leather is cur a curtain and the steering wheel is the curtain rod. But when you finish up, you want the curtain spaced evenly along the curtain rod. So you might slide the curtain towards one end of the rod or the other until it's evened up all the way around. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm seeing how it's fitting and then I'm sliding the leather down the rod to make sure it's all rather uniform and I don't have any puckers uh, in any one spot. So you want to keep it evened out. That way you'll get the flattest fit when you're done. All right, so at this point I have finished all the stitches except for the last two. And I'm going back and pulling each of the stitches tight and making sure the leather lies down how I want it to. My main concern here is that the leather fits snugly around the wheel. If someone were to grip the wheel really tightly, I wouldn't want the leather spinning on this center core.
So I'm working my way all the way to the end. And then we'll pull all the slack out of this thread. We'll do the last two stitches. And uh, of course the last one will be exactly as our first one was. It'll be straight across and that will help to square up that leather on the end to get the perfect fit for the channel. And when I make a square knot on the end, I'm going to run my thread under the edge of the leather and pull that knot around so it's underneath. Now to get the edge of that leather into the channel, I am putting a gel CA glue in with a probe, and then I'm using my upholstery awl to squeeze it right down in there. This is a really handy tool for this. And I have to take the time to wipe the glue off of the awl every time. But it works so nice. It's a really sturdy tool. It lets me get a lot of leverage. It doesn't have a sharp edge. It doesn't have a sharp point. It's just good for manipulating this kind of a thing. And to keep it clean in between applications. And I'm using this probe just to transport the glue so I can place it exactly where I want it and don't make a mess. That's the main goal. I think I see some glue on the leather there. Oh well. So of course I am prepping and dyeing the wheel around just to make everything as uniform as possible. Now here's the deal. This leather has a grain in it, as you noticed, and the original steering leather is very smooth. Here I'm putting the color on. So uh, we elected to go with the leather that I had in stock. Uh, the idea was uh, they wanted to take pictures of this vehicle right now today and this is the only way we could expedite that. The customer will never discern the difference. This plastic is white where the metallic had all worn off. And so we're using our metallic plastic coaters here to put a film on there. 
drying with each pass. The touch up is pretty simple and doesn't take much time but the masking of course is the time consuming part here. And we've way over masked but uh, that's kind of like an insurance policy just to make sure we don't have to do any cleanup. So we have a little extra value added to our job here. I hope you found that the leather replacement wasn't as daunting as maybe you had once thought. The steering wheels with the channel certainly make the repair quite straightforward, quite easy, and it makes for a real clean finished look without too much work. Well, thank you for watching, but before you leave, take a look at our remarkable little pet. She's usually very timid, but when I'm getting ready to cook out there on the grill, which I do every night, and she's hungry, she'll come out on the chair and stand up and lift her head up and stare at me until we go get her something to eat. I guess it's on the days that she hasn't caught very much while she's hunting, but she likes these worms. She's usually good for two. The male can eat nine at a time when he's hungry if, he, if he's gone for three days and hasn't caught much. And she'll be good for another one. Our little slice of paradise.